1960s was a time when America was coming apart at the seams. The war in Vietnam, assassinations of Martin Luther King, of Robert F. Kennedy. We had people who were concerned about urban air pollution, would have these demonstrations outside power plants wearing gas masks. People who were concerned about the destruction of the Great Lakes, about an oil spill in Santa Barbara, California. The United States and the Soviet Union were still involved in an arms race. When you contemplate the issues that were at the forefront of people's consciousness, which clearly included the potential for thermonuclear war. And all of this stuff, I mean, it was a profoundly depressing time to think about conflict. The space race with the Soviet Union was an extension, in my mind, of the Cold War itself. We were seriously worried about uh, the Soviet Union striking our country. Every time we turned around, the Russians uh, one-upped us. Small satellite spheres would be launched as test vehicles during 1957. The first of these test vehicles is planned to be launched in December of this year. They flew uh, Gargarin. May 5th, 1961, Alan Shepard waits. All right, uh, lift off and the clock has started. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. NASA, with input from the CIA, advised that the Soviet Union were planning a flight around the moon. The idea of them beating us, really, uh, I found that very uncomfortable. So when Apollo came along, I thought this was a uh, even better way, you know, definitive way, to prove that uh, capitalism was the best way to go. The incredible thing about Apollo 8 was how very quickly it happened. It wasn't planned long term at all. What NASA decided was to send it all the way around the moon with the astronauts in it without separating anything off and just bring it back to Earth. They were going to go in a kind of figure eight around the moon and then back to Earth, orbiting the moon a few times. This is the moon, man's first stop on his way to explore our solar system. There is the making of a human partnership where space technology and science will serve as instruments of man's peace in the world. Apollo 8 will become the first manned spacecraft to ride atop America's largest and most powerful launch vehicle, Saturn V. For this is to be a mission without precedent. Its destination, the moon. In our crew on Apollo 8, I am about four years younger than Borman and Lowell. I'm a lot smarter than they are. <laughs> I had not flown in space, and so therefore I was technically uh, the rookie. I became sort of the flight engineer. I worried about the command module and all its valves and switches. Borman worried about their trajectory, and uh, Lovell worried about navigation. I just immersed myself uh, totally in uh, the various spacecraft systems and became, I think, pretty expert. Once we were on a crew and had to go to the simulators at all, all hours of the day and night, uh, really impacted uh, the family. And I made a calculation one time that I had uh, 10 minutes of uh, private time with each child per week. That was tough for them and for me. How dangerous is it? You know, we designed the Apollo. We said we were going to the moon. Finally, when we get down to, uh, to examining the details and saying we're really going, people start getting a little crazy about it. So here we were going to take off on the first 
time any humans had left their home planet on a vehicle that had never been tested. Valerie, my wife, was used to uh, the fact of uh, squadron mates dying and crashing. I knew it was risky, so I actually had uh, two tapes. One to play for the kids at Christmas time, and one to play for Valerie alone, should something go wrong. 